Okay, so last time we start with les lesson three, and we uh, we're uh, going to cover the network devices still, and uh, tomorrow we'll have the topologies, IP addressing, and uh, subnetting of network systems. But as of now, we are still in uh, network hardware essentials because uh, before we start with the laboratory, we need uh, some uh, background uh, knowledge and as well as on how to connect these devices in, uh, in the um, packet tracer. So doing this in a physical environment where you are in the laboratory is quite uh, tasky and uh, it needs the participation of all the group. So uh, I'll just have the short uh, review from last week so that you will have a refresher or uh, knowledge because uh, on the Friday we'll have an uh, online uh, test but on Friday, we won't have a lecture on Friday. And also I'll give time, I will give also a short lecture on Thursday so that you'll have an ample time to study. And uh, for Friday, I will just give uh, multiple choice questions also in Google Classroom. So uh, just, uh, review the previous uh, notes that uh, I'll send you in Google Classroom. And also I will uh, uh, include also the material or the book that I used in, in this course, and as well as uh, the PowerPoint slides. Uh, that is already in PDF, so because I could not have it in a real file because it has some uh, animation and uh, uh, pictures. So it's going to be too large for me to email it all of you. So PDF is much better. Now we start with, uh, so we are finished here. So this is just a short review of, uh, the previous uh, topic. Now, as we review, uh, I'm going to ask a random question, like it's going to be also a part of your test, uh, online test, so what is this? This is your? Router, sir. Router. So this is your router, router correct? Router. And this one? Wireless router. Sir. Wireless router. Home router. Okay, wireless router is correct. And this one? Server. Server. Okay, uh, this is server. And how about this one? What is this? Network switch. Correct. And uh, this one? Hub. Uh, that is hub, correct? And how about this one? Network controller. Correct. And the last uh, image for this is your? AP, sir. Wireless access. Okay, so that is a wireless access point. Okay, correct. So? Uh, this is just, I'll just move forward. And we have this uh, simple, uh, uh, what is, uh, what is, uh, ICMP? Internet control message, messaging protocol. So, uh, I, ICMP is uh, the one who provides you the uh, platform to communicate with uh, other computer. So ping is used to connect to another computer. So that is the command in your command prompt. Now, uh, 
IP address, uh, we have uh, this is a 32 bit address uh, that is used to assign to devices as identification of the network. And also, we have uh, the basic one, Ethernet. Uh, it's uh, commonly used for local area network. And also, we have uh, performed uh, ARP, address resolution protocol. And for uh, your module five, so this also uh, the deadline will be on Friday. So any questions on uh, module uh, five? None, sir. Okay. So now we begin with the continuous uh, continuous topic. So after we learn already the uh, what are LANs, WANs, and MANs and internet works these are your network systems so when we say lan what is lan lan is based on offices department uh, within the building sir uh, within the building within uh, local, sir. Uh, local area network so like uh, Kamsi Alihis is a LAN because we are not that really big uh, uh, connection. So we have only uh, building to buildings or offices between offices. It's a LAN. Uh, when you say uh, Metro, Metropolitan Area Network, you have uh, a city uh with different services like you have uh, hospitals you have uh, police fire department and uh, it the thing is the difference between uh, land and man is the geographical area or the coverage so if the coverage uh, is like bacolod city which has how many barangays so 50 plus right so if you have that big amount of uh, connection we call it metropolitan area network but if you have only like uh kamsi alihis kamsi binalbagan so you have a uh, a small uh, small area that you're going to cover now for wide area network Example, we have uh, telcos like having uh, these uh, big coverage areas, every island to island, every country. That is a wide area network. So understanding these systems are very crucial in, uh, in uh, your success in building re reliable and high performance networks. So early networks didn't use uh, interconnecting devices. Computer were connected in a daisy chain by lens of cable. Uh, in this example, we have uh, figure 17. Figure 17 shows a daisy chain internet work. And you could also have this uh, diagram in the book of Network Essential by uh, uh, Grohe. And uh, the problem with this, what do you think is the problem? with this uh, connection that there were uh, limited in total length so cabling and number of computers uh, that could be uh, connected so uh, and also uh, this requires a uh, a number of wires to connect so it's not easy to implement a daisy chain uh, interconnection network Now uh, we go forward with uh, understanding uh, what is a repeater. So as you see earlier, we have in a packet tracer, uh, what is repeater on this uh, diagram? Where is repeater? This one is repeater or this one? Corner, so we, Corner. this one is your uh, repeater, Corner, sir. okay.
So a uh, repeater. So a repeater is a a uh, device that uh, have uh, to generate uh, receiving uh, bit signals generated by network interface card. So this repeater uh, connects to your network interface card and other devices and uh, strengthening them, then uh, sending them along on a uh, signal uh, or it's uh, going to repeat the signal from other part, but it does not increase the signal strength. It's only send the same signal or it just extend to another location. So although the original is amplified, so the, rep the repeater takes a weakened signal and repeats its ori original signal strength. So repeater is just to, uh, to provide another connection to another location. So this is used uh, basically if you want to extend your connection to another house. So for example, the original uh, internet uh, connection is in uh, your parents' uh, house and they have the telephone line and your uh, wireless router. Then after that, if you want to have a connection to another uh, house, so on the end, uh, you have your house and it takes like more than uh, uh, 10 meters. So with this type of uh, scenario, since 10 meters may, uh, may give you lesser internet uh, connectivity. So you try to put a uh, repeater and the signal is just going to be uh, transferred, but not reduced, but it's going to be the same signal as before. So in that case, you just uh, provide another way for this uh, location to have internet. Likewise, this is also similar to some areas in our Wi-Fi zone in malls and other uh, establishments. Now we have uh, this uh, uh, old technology we call this a uh, multiple uh, multi-port uh, repeater. It is just a repeater with uh, several ports, so you can uh, connect by cabling. And uh, most uh, multi-port repeaters have at least uh, four ports, and some have uh, twenty-four or more. A multiple uh, uh, mu uh, multi-port repeater is uh, commonly called a hub. So although it performs uh, the same function as a traditional repeater, it is used as a central connecting device for computer instead of a merely way to extend the network. So uh, in this way, uh, it's like uh, also the same uh, uh, reason on the previous slide that uh, repeater just uh, able to uh, provide a network on a specific area. And uh, in this case, uh, a hub uh, perform uh, the same function as a repeater, but uh, with more outgoing ports and uh, which uh, bit signals are repeated. So its function is uh, as follows. So the functions uh, of uh, the hub is uh, it receives uh, bit signals generated from a connected computer on uh, one of its ports. And second, it cleans the signal by uh, filtering out the noise. And also it generates the signal to full strength. And also the last is you, uh, it uh, transmits uh, the generated signal to all other ports on a computer. Uh, which is connected to. So example, uh, in this diagram, how many computers do we have? How many computers? Six. So we have six. six hub. So your hub, uh, you have how many ports for your hub? You have one, two, three, 
uh, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. So you have eight hub with uh, uh, eight port hub. So you connect uh, six computer. And uh, in this case, so in your laboratory later, we'll have uh, three computers to be connected to a hub as well as uh, on a switch. So we go to the next. So uh, uh, what is uh, hubs and uh, network bandwidth? So network bandwidth, again, in hub is the amount of data uh, that can be transferred on a network using a specific interval. It's uh, usually measured in uh, bits per second. And the uh, network. Uh, operate at speeds uh, from 100, uh, 10 million bits uh, per second or 10 uh, Mbps and up to 10 gigabits per second or Gbps. Yeah, this bandwidth is determined by uh, how fast network devices can spend its bits of data to the medium. So what is your medium here, example? So here in uh, the packet tracer hub this is just a uh, since the hub nowadays are not mostly used so this is just a illustration on possibly that we could uh, implement hub in uh, the laboratory so how many ports do we have in the hub six so you have six uh, links and uh in example, uh, what would be your uh, uh, cable uh, that you're going to use? So you're going to use Ethernet uh, cable. And uh, example, uh, in this uh, 10 uh, megabit uh, per second hub, it transmit at the rate of uh, 10 million uh, per second to put this rate into perspective to computers connected to a 10 Mbps hub can copy one uh, minute of MP3 music to each about uh, 1.25 seconds. But a 100 megabit per second hub can transfer the same amount of information in about uh, one eighth of a second. So which one is faster, the 10 Mbps hub or the uh, 100 Mbps hub? 100, sir. 100. So, 100. So, uh, what is uh, one eighth of a second? That is one over eight. And uh, uh, this is uh, the turn on, turn off button. Uh, now, the setting is uh, on, okay? When you see green in a packet tracer. One of the drawbacks of hubs as the central connecting device uh, on a network is that only one computer can transmit data at a time. So it does not uh, work as a simultaneous transfer. So you're going to wait for another computer to finish transferring the data. But uh, on a busy network, a dozen of computers uh, transferring large files and accessing network application and database, this limitation is really uh, is one of the disadvantage. And uh, uh, this setup uh, is called uh, bandwidth uh, sharing because all computers connected to the hub must have uh, share the amount of bandwidth that the hub uh, provides. For example, uh, we have 10 computers uh, connected to 10 Mbps hub and all the 10 computers are trying to send and receive files frequently because the computer must share the bandwidth and the average effective bandwidth for each computer is only one megabit per second. Transferring that one minute of MP3 in music in this example takes the, uh, more than uh, 12 seconds. But it still may be fast. But nowadays, uh, transferring uh, one minute uh, MP3 music is like almost uh, negligible, like on the spot you could have 
the music already. While before then, using Hub, it takes uh, long to process or to uh, transfer a music file. Uh, we have the Hub indicator. So in the old uh, devices, we have uh, this uh, scenario where indicators were basis for the status, network activity, and collision. So we have the status indicator, uh, link light, it uh, glows uh, usually green. When the cable uh, have been plugged uh, in and a valid network connection, a link may be made to a device on the other end of the cable. Some hubs have a separate indicator or indicator might vary in color of uh, different connection speeds. For example, link light uh, might glow green for 100 uh, megabit per second connection and amber for a 10 megabit per second connection. Now for the basic uh, switch operation, so this is uh, one of the things that we will uh, mostly uh, have to do in our laboratory. So you could also implement this uh, in our activity later. So we will try to do this also. And uh, we go now to the basic uh, switch operation. So in the previous slide, uh, can you still uh, recall which one is a switch? On this slide, which one is a switch? On this slide, which one is a switch? The box with? So, um, um, uh, oh, so normally this is your this is your switch. Oh, thank you. Correct. This one is your switch, and this one is your. I don't know. Tawag. In packet tracer, this is your hub, and this is your switch. Okay. Now, uh, last time we have a short glimpse and overview introduction on how we're going to check our uh, IP address. So what is the command in uh, checking your IP address of your computer? How do you, uh, what is the command used in command prompt to check? IP config. So IP config. So data is sent to the medium in uh, one frame at a time. At the beginning of each frame, this contains a destination computer's uh, MAC address and the source computer MAC address. So what is a media access control address? This is your? Physical address. Uh. Physical oh, this address. Is your, OK, correct. So this is your physical address. Uh, every device, like your phone, have its own physical address. Also, it's similar to MAC address. When you try to connect to another computer, that's why it's uh, going to identify your uh, your uh, your computer ID. When the frame uh, reaches the switch, so it reads uh, the both addresses. So when it reach, it, it reads both addresses. Yes, correct. Uh, and uh, the switch uh, we will be able to read the source MAC address and the switch uh, keeps the record of which uh, port sending and which is uh, on. So you could try to simulate later uh, if the computer is on, if the computer is off. So which one is uh, going to be detected by another computer? So in this way, we could be able to see that there is what we call a term, learning, where uh, 
when the switch is learning to which port on each MAC address in the network uh, corresponds. So if you turn on your computer, your uh, network will learn that ah, this computer is uh, having this address and it's going to be connected to this another computer. By reading the destination MAC address, the switch can forward the frame to the port destination uh, when the computer is on, a switch uh, maintains a switching table that is shown uh, in uh, figure 21. On this side, this is your switching table. Commonly, we will have uh, to use this most of the time since we will have subnetting. And uh, in this way, the switch can uh, learn that uh, this uh, port uh, uses this. Uh, MAC address and uh, example since this is uh, connected to port number uh, six so the MAC address is being copied here and the port number was also uh, identified and the next one we have uh, computer B so computer B what is the name of the port so that is the first port so you have the first port and for uh, C, so you have this. So that is, uh, I think, uh, two. Uh, computer C is uh, port number two. And uh, also for uh, computer D, you have uh, the third uh, port. So mostly uh, the first port is uh, usually for your server, but in this case, it's only show the connection between the port and the computer from the switch. Now, uh, how do we uh, compare uh, the following with the uh, hub? So switches and network bandwidth, uh, because a switch is uh, capable of forwarding frames to one only single port, instead of all ports, as a hub does, it can handle uh, several computers uh, at one time, thereby allowing each devices to full network bandwidth or dedicated bandwidth, instead of requiring uh, bandwidth sharing. In other words, if the switch in figure 21 is a 10 Mbps, computer A uh, could communicate with uh, computer C uh, computer A could communicate with computer C with an uninterrupted 10 Mbps and computer B could communicate with computer D also uh, simultaneously. Uh, furthermore, each computer can receive data at 10 megabit per second. At the same time, it's sending data about 10 megabit per second making each uh, conversation between computers effectively 20, p, uh, 20 megabit per second uh, in both direction, that is 10 megabit per second. When a device can send data and receive data simultaneously, it's called a uh, full duplex. I think we discussed this in our next week about a uh, full duplex and half duplex. Uh, at the same time, when you say... Uh, uh, half duplex if the data can either send or receive but not uh, both at the same time that is half duplex now for your uh, switch indicator lights aside from the requisite power indicator switches have link status indicator and uh, activity indicator so they might have uh, also have uh, indicators to show whether a port is operating in full duplex or half duplex mode. Uh, switches like hubs can be connected to one another so that uh, your LAN can grow beyond the limitation of number of ports on a switch. Some switches also have a dedicated port for uplinking to another uh, switch. Uh, this term uplinking is making a connection between devices such as two switches and usually for the purposes of expanding the network. On this side, you will see the power cord, and this side you see the indicators and some information, and all of this going to be your 
uh, connectivity. And you have some uh, uh, possibly network uh, networking. Uh, this is uh, for your network router. Now uh, we'll have a uh, a short break, uh, like uh, 10 minutes before we proceed with the uh, laboratory module so that I could uh, stop the recording and we continue again for another session on laboratory. Any questions on the lecture? None, sir. Okay, so I'll stop the recording and None, after, None, sir. after this we'll have the laboratory maybe a short break. Uh, 10 minutes or 5 minutes is okay. 5 to 10 minutes, we will go back. But I will just uh, to stop the recording and I'll just uh, have the laboratory module open. Okay?